Thank you for staying with us. It's time for After Press. We'll be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning. And joining us to review the papers is Dr. Ambrose Ibuke, Chairman Guild of Public Affairs Analyst of Nigeria, Inugu State Chapter. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. And thanks for having me on the show this morning. Yes, compliments of the season to you. Uh, same here. Same here. Same here. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to start with Nature News today, and the major headline here says, How 6,000 farmers lost seedlings produced to Lagos flooding, says Nema. So we're hearing, first, we have this shortage in food supply. Um, people are not able to move their produce to the market. And right now we're looking at the Nature News because we're trying to decipher what's going on basically so people are not able to um, move their produce to the market and now we're hearing that even the seedlings are being lost what is your thoughts on this one well the, the impact of this is uh, uh, is going to be felt by next year mm. as we all know uh, uh, in agriculture seedling means that uh, the, the seeds that you use to plant for the next season mm. uh, so um, the harvest for this year has been concluded uh, we might not feel it but in the next, by this time next year, we'll feel the bite of what has just happened. Uh, because seed plants uh, is the thing that you use to plant for the next uh, farming season. So having lost that means that there will be negative impact on the output of farmers next uh, year. Uh, however, um, Nigeria has been grappling with uh, adequate storage facilities or adequate uh, evil seedlings. Um, you know, the agricultural ministries from the federal level, even towards some World Bank assisted projects, have been trying to see how they could improve and enhance uh, capabilities of farmers and capacities to store, uh, uh, you know, produce and seedlings. Um, knowing this, I, uh, I don't know if NEMA did not, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know, disaster management or other agencies that are responsible, whether they need to warn the farmers about the impending flooding. And then also what the Lagos state government did with them. Uh, because these things could be avoided. Uh, I don't know why they should allow farmers to store their silage where they know the flood is coming. So some of those things that could be avoided should try to be avoided so that they don't plunge the country uh, into uh, an agricultural or food crisis situation. Uh, these things are avoidable. And so uh, we should be more proactive rather than reactive in the things we do in this country. Hmm. So what does that mean for us now? Because first, we're talking about fuel subsidy being removed. Um, we're talking about shortage in food supply as of right now. And then uh, next year, that means there might be no food. So does this mean there's a possible famine um, lurking? Well, uh, there are ways you can st uh, stop the gap. Uh, the seedlings that were lost, the federal government could uh, can ensure that the farmers get back their seedling uh, through... Uh, a process where the farmers can be given back uh, free seedlings or even provided for them on uh, maybe on uh, a credit, uh, you know, on deficit basis so that where they plant their farmer. Uh, you know, give uh, back the seedlings. So while we lost seedlings, doesn't mean that we can just leave the farmers like that without uh, uh, materials to plant. So farmers can, uh, government can encourage them by even giving them maybe two food you know, of what they have lost. And then you get uh, the necessary things like fertilizers, uh, the tractors, and some other things to help them so that I will also have uh, farming. Uh, it is only when we don't act that we can suffer. But when we act accordingly, especially proactively, then we, don't, we won't do that. So now that we know that there is disaster in that area, especially in that uh, southwest house, uh, the two Lagos, we can, uh, the local state government, or the federal, in conjunction with the federal government, could do quickly rally around the farmers and uh, you know, supply their seedlings in the new uh, coming year. Uh, so this is also what can be replicated across the country uh, so that there won't be shortage of food. We can plan this year to avoid shortage of food next year. But if we do nothing, as we usually do, then there will be shortage of food. Then when there's shortage of food, you start sending people doing press conferences and bringing food from Ukraine, bringing you food from China, and bringing mm -hmm. food from everywhere. Uh, that is always the check approach that we're put in this country. So it is now time to plan. Disaster has happened. And you know that this disaster will affect food output next year. Start now and try to remediate whatever that has happened so that it won't, food shortage won't happen next year. That is how serious countries plan. And I think we, could, we can do that. It's not a rocket science. How, uh, what strategy are we going to use? Because um, when the president, former president Jonathan was here, he had a minister, Akiomi, uh, 
that is now the um, African Development Bank chairman, and he had a strategy where everything that was given from the federal got to the farmers. Uh, I can say that because uh, I know in my remote village where we have farmers, they could have their farm inputs, fertilizers, um, herbicides, and everything that they needed. When the next government came, the government of uh, President Muhammad Buhari, they jettisoned that uh, system. And also, this president has come. There's nothing uh, regarding that, how things should move from the federal to the local farmers. Which means, it might still be like the palliatives, that we are finding palliatives that are ready-made food that uh, people should get and feed themselves are being hoarded by politicians and used for their birthday souvenirs and so many other things that are really annoying. How do you think the federal government, what kind of strategy do you think they can use to make sure that these things that need to get to the farmers so that they can start to produce uh, what we need for next year can get to them? What is the best way to go? Well, we are, you have said it. Uh, you know, uh, this, it's not, uh, as I've said earlier, it's not something that has not been done. We are not even, you just cited an example. The example you cited is not what happened in India or what happened in uh, Rwanda or what happened in the United States of America. The example you cited is actually what happened here in Nigeria. So we have done it. Something we did 10 years ago. We cannot even replicate it. Some things we did 40 years ago. We cannot even continue with this. Things we did 50 years deep, 50 years ago. We cannot even do it now. So that means uh, there is a, a, a kind of, we are progressing towards retrogression. That's what is happening in this country. Because if we cannot even run a, an efficient system, we ran uh, more than uh, almost half a decade ago, um, half a century ago, and then we come to this uh, 2023, we are, we are, so that means we are operating as if we are in the 1920s or 1930s. Because if we cannot even replicate the things we did uh, in 1960s and 70s. Uh, so we have said it all. Uh, Additional is still there. Uh, he's still very active. Uh, Jonathan is still there. He's still very active. So um, whatever it is, it is worth. Uh, the secretaries, the directors, the um, uh, staff of the Federal Ministry of Agri, uh, some of them that were part of this process are still there. So what is what? why can't it work? What Additional did was to buy... Uh, these uh, cheap phones, uh, these uh, very cheap phones for them, for farmers distributed it across the country, and then uh, you get text message directly from the uh, from the Minister of Agri telling you that your fertilizer is here, this and that, and then by the time you, you go, they tell you where to pick it up. You pick it up and you acknowledge it, and that is it. It went directly, and there's those reports where you know where the feedbacks and everything were controlled in the central. Uh, system where everybody could see that even that your village that somebody got it and he had responded that he got it and, and so those kind of things cut off the middlemen uh, and then were able to go straight to the farmers and you could see the the impact there was a serious economic boom that period uh, farming was very uh, was very you know uh, sweet to the farmers and they were able to bring out a lot of output uh, but you know who are the middlemen the middlemen are basically are the public office holders the uh, the politicians, even the civil servants are part of the are part of it. And so these things we know them and then it is about the will. It's about the body language. So it's about it's about the will of whoever is in charge. It's about the will of the president. It's about of whoever in charge. So that, 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 that it works. If the president is not ready to put his feet on ground to ensure that this things happen well, then uh, it it won't happen. Okay, um, I want to look at something else here in Nature News, and this says Nigeria will achieve port automation integration by 2025, says NPA, which is the um, okay, Nigerian, the port authorities. So I know they're saying they want to do the port um, automation, but how achievable is this? Um, they're claiming that two weeks of work would be done in a couple of hours. But is this achievable for us? Do we have the technology right now? I know 2025 seems like a long time, which is in two years, but well, almost in 2024. Are you sure that we can get there before 2025? The Nigerian ports and then its authority that is running it um, are, dis are, are disgraceful. I mean, they, it's a shame of the century. Um, the, for even the Nigerian post to come tell us that uh, he's trying to talk to me and announcing it and calling press conference and reporting it to you, it's shameful. I mean, we have lost sense of shame in this country. 
uh, the NPA bomb. In 2023, you are talking about port automation. Port automation was supposed to happen so many years ago. They who are there are the ones frustrating it. I mean, small countries like Ghana, uh, Togo, to, uh, Togo, uh, Benin Republic, and some of these countries. Let, let's build Europe and the United States out of it. We are talking about our African countries. Uh, they are operating efficient port systems. Now, it takes you, somebody was doing analysis the other time about export of yam to us, to Europe. In Nigeria, it will take you 75 days to move your, to, to, from the time you bring your yams, two bars of yam to the post, to move it 75 days because of manual, because of multiple agencies inspecting it, because of all kinds of bureaucracy, because of corruption and all kinds of things. Meanwhile, in the Republic, it takes five days to move the same thing. Mm. So, uh, so we are losing even Nigerians are using the port of uh, SME, are using the, uh, the, border. I mean, the, the the border ports to bring in goods. Some of them are going to Togo. So something is fundamentally wrong, wrong, and we know it. So there won't be any automation because the corrupt uh, system will not allow you to be automated. So it is learned for, I keep on saying that to this federal, uh, a critical federal infrastructure and agencies, the, we, the president needs to put his feet on ground. We cannot allow uh, civil servants and uh, people who are running this system, uh, who are gaining from the corrupt system and from the manual system to rubbish us. If we have, uh, you know, look at well, what we did in the banking sector, where we just went almost fully digital, uh, uh, digital that sector. A lot of sectors have gone digital. Even the even the licensing uh, of your of your card documents and the plate numbers and some of these things are on digital. You do this total access your message and address. Look at Lagos when you commit a traffic offense now, they're sending many things are going digital. This that these things that are even more complicated. Port is not complicated, it's an international trade. And other countries have, have the integration has happened in other serious countries. It's all for us to just plug in. And then make sure our own system is integrated. But they won't make it integrated. They won't make it digital because they are they are they are getting from the corruption from mm. the manual process, which is rife with corruption. So uh, the NPA should spare us these uh, scriptories and just ensure that our funds are uh, you know uh, integrated. Why 2025? This test can take place under one month. The the technology is there. All you need is integration. Call a consultant. Uh, uh, IT experts to do this. It's not rocket science. We can digitize our post in February. You can start running it by March. So this 2025 is what for you to steal more money or what? <laughs> so please, uh, this is not the kind of news you want to you want to be uh, hearing. We want to hear that Nigerian posts have been fully digitized. Mm -hmm. Not that uh, we we'll digitize the post in 2025. Who are you telling those kind of stories? And I don't blame them. It's Nigerians don't react to this kind of things. They you know uh, we, 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 are, we are, you know, seems to be at home with uh, inefficiency. So the, the uh, NPA boss or whoever is saying that should just spare us those dramas. Mm. Okay, let's move to the Nation newspaper. Um, the leading headline is Lalong resigns from FEC. That is the uh, former or the Minister of Labor and uh, Employment has decided to go and take the position of a senator for the Plateau South um, Senatorial District. Uh, I don't know what you think about that. Um, I, I think that, that was a smart move. Um, uh, the minister appointment is a, a... The minister is an appointment, and tomorrow the president can sack you, and then you, you, you go back you know, to wherever you are. So, but the senatorial, senatorial seat is an elective position. Which we won, uh, which you uh, you know, it's a political, uh, and uh, you know, people have voted for, uh, voted for you. So it is, uh, it is safer. Uh, we we talk of job security. Uh, the Senate is safer. Uh, being a senator is safer than being a minister because, as a minister, uh, you can be asked to leave any time. And so, uh, so uh, this uh, I, when when I read that news, I was like, oh, at last. And so, uh, so we are waiting for other ministers to do the same. Uh, people are holding two positions, uh, and uh, they are waiting for the highest courts to declare. So um, we are waiting for someone like Umahi, Dave Umahi, to also do the same thing. He's a minister and he's a senator. So um, it should, uh, we are not running a parliamentary system of government where you can be where the ministers are from the 
uh, parliament. This is a presidential system for government where the ministers are different from the parliamentarians. But my, uh, so, my concern, uh, my concern, sir, doctor, is uh, the fact that um, these ministers, as you have mentioned, some of them, it seems as if they were not appointed because of what is happening. They were not appointed based on merit, based on their capabilities. They were appointed as a consolation that they lost in their senatorial district. So come and just hold the fort until you are declared winner in your, your senatorial district and you can go. Because if Nigeria needs them in the capacity the president uh, chose them, I should have thought that maybe patriotism and confidence in themselves that they will deliver and not be sacked at any moment will make them stay. For instance, you have the chief of staff. He won. He was a former speaker of the House of Representatives yeah. and he, he left it and came to take up the responsibility of Chief of Staff of the President. So ministerial position being used as stopgap for people to uh, just stand there, uh, continue earning money until they are declared by the courts that they won in the central districts, it disturbs me somehow. Well, you had the one said that uh, the ministerial position was a place, kind of a placeholder uh, for them to see if they will win at the uh, courts in their senatorial bid. You are the one said that it's a placeholder. Well, I don't think the president think, uh, thought that it was a placeholder. Uh, there are Nigerians and there are politicians and they're qualified for the position. Uh, so, um, uh, so um, I don't share your view. Uh, they, they are, they, they, the president appointed them as ministers and then they won their case uh, at the courts. By the time they were being appointed minister, Remember that someone like Lalong was not a, was not a senator because he was not declared winner. So why he was why he was there doing that? He was not a senator. So it was someone like Dave Uma you can be talking about saying that he was a, he was a senator. Although the case is still in court and the rest, it's so if somebody like that is what you want. Somebody like that is what we we'll talk about. You have to choose which one do you want to do. Uh, you, you, all of them are serving the nation. So, if you are a minister, you are serving the country. If you are a senator, you are serving the country. If you are as of you are serving the country. So, whatever the capacity you have, it's your, it's your personal decision and uh, uh, where you you want to be. The other one, as I have explained earlier, is it's, it's your people that gave you the mandate in terms of uh, 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 through the election route. But the other one uh, is not your people that gave you the, the, the mandate. It is at the pleasure of Mr. President. So, uh, for people who want to think uh, the other way, like Lalong, even that the one that maybe the people gave him, uh, he, he has more, you know, rights to eat than the one that is given as somebody's pleasure. And so that is how, uh, that is my uh, introspect to me, to say, oh, maybe he just feels that, you know, uh, you can, of course, the minister can be fired any time. So let's not uh, run dribble about it. If, uh, if, if, if the president feels that the minister is not doing well, he can be fired. Minister to be post, like what uh, Buhari did in his time. It's not a political position. It's not tenured. It's some people like, uh, that's why the economy was in tatters during Buhari's time. Because the minister position was taken as if it was tenured and, and if it was uh, uh, an electoral, uh, elective position, it is not. It is at the pleasure of the Mr. President. He gave you some mandate, and if he didn't deliver that, you get sacked and get booted out. Mm. All right, um, let's just look at Daily Trust. Um, there's a small headline at the bottom um, corner there, which says NMA gives FG, federal government, 45-day ultimatum to review doctor's salary. So we know that a lot of doctors have been moving out of the country. Um, the healthcare system is actually deteriorating at the moment because you're even seeing wards being closed. Um, there are no personnel on site. And um, now they say they want their salary reviewed. Um, what does this mean for us? If the salary doesn't get reviewed, are we going to lose more doctors? Or is the federal government going to even budge at any given point? Nigeria is in a medical crisis situation. But unfortunately, see, the federal government is not even saying the crisis and the emergency in the health sector. Do your own assessment. Talk to the young girls and boys who are studying for nursing uh, in nursing schools around. I've interacted with a lot, a lot of them. The person is just waiting to get licensed by the Nigerian Midwifery Council, uh, by the uh, Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria. And once the person is licensed, the next thing the person wants to do is to leave this country. Anywhere can do. 
A lot of them go to Canada. Some of them go to the UK. Some of them. So other people are using Nigerian medical personnel to fill their own gap. Mm. Like in the, in the UK, they, they, they have a lot of health gaps. So they were taking a lot of Nigerian nurses. When it was not the law, they were not started taking uh, caregivers uh, and other health workers. A lot of Nigerians have come there as caregivers. A lot of people have moved. In the last three years, I can count up to like 10 nurses I know personally that have moved. Caregivers, more than 30. Personally, these are people I know. Then, you know, multiply that across the country and see the kind of crisis we are in. As you rightly said, there's somebody I know who was trying to recruit a nurse for uh, the office in Abuja. And uh, they were not able to do that for six months. Anybody you, you see, anybody they wanted to employ, with, they would tell, ah, I'm already processing a uh, leave, you know, I may not last up to three months, I may not last up to six months, I may not last up to eight months. These are the things you are hearing. And the person wanted stability. So it took them a lot of time. Even those who are already in the system working for the person, the private company, some of them are already leaving too. So it's a huge crisis that we are not even, uh, we have not imagined the, you know, the impact of what is going to happen. Our doctors and the consultants are leaving. I know somebody who is a consultant or obstetrician and gynecologist who said that he's believe in this country, you know, it's, it's gone. That he was one of the people who believe so much who have been chastising his colleagues who were leaving, and he wants to leave. Because the colleagues who have left, some of them go to the Saudi Arabia or some other country, are earning huge money. We converted to the Nigerian currency. Some of them are earning as much as, much as 7 million, 8 million, 10 million, 6 million, depending on where you're working and the kind of qualification you have. We convert to the Nigerian currency in a month. And then somebody is here earning like 500,000 naira. And then mm -hmm. overworked because we don't even have enough medical personnel. Mm. So people, the little ones, the ones that are remaining, have been overworked. We are hearing cases of doctors falling dead. The one in Lasso, we heard was still dead. We had had other cases in Lutz, we had other places. People, doctors are falling off, are, are dying because of overwork. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming a, it's, it's become a medical emergency. So NMA does not even need to, uh, Nigerian Medical Association does not even need to talk about it before the federal government should do it. It should be declared an emergency and whatever they need should be given to them so that they can be encouraged to stay there was there was news the other day that the president went out and he was begging nigerian doctors and health workers to return mm -hmm. uh, to do uh, their duty for nigeria he was begging them who said that abroad. who said that he was on the news who, who said it the president went out i think it was uh, uh was it uh, in at the sidelines of the COP28 or so, mm. and he was begging doctors of Nigerian descent the, to the come. President to doesn't, it, it is psycho fancy. The president doesn't need to beg doctors. All the president needs to do is sit down with the health ministry, sit down with the budget office, sit down with the planning office, see how much we can allocate to the health sector to the salary of it, give them jumbo pay, and say from now on we are going to triple all this thing. America is paying you uh, 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 one thousand. Uh, uh, we are paying you like five thousand dollars per month. We are going to pay you seven thousand dollars per month. Come back. We are going to pay consultants seven thousand. We are going to pay this. You sit down with the Nigerian Medical Association. You work it out. Increase their salaries. You don't need to tell anybody to come back. You don't even need to beg anybody. Once they see the package is sweet, they come back. The truth is that many people that have left this country don't actually want to leave. Nigerians love Nigeria. They want to stay. But it's the economic hardship that's making them leave. So the president should not uh, uh, just uh, be saying this thing for the sake of saying it. <laughs> I know you're talking, about, you're talking about... Health is, a criti health is a critical sector. Yes. Health is a critical sector, just like education. So vote money and increase their salaries. Increase their pay. The nurses, the doctors, the medical, uh, other medical uh, you know, staff. And let us have a, a good health sector. They will return naturally. Nobody needs to beg. Don't beg anybody. Give them a huge package. They will return. Mm. Well, we hope that. Um, I, I believe that if the offer is juicy enough, mm -hmm. um, people would. At least the ones here stay. will not. Move. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure we can maybe match up with the <laughs> with the US and Canada and say we want to. Because I'm we, we we can. we I, have I, that I revenue. That. We can. We can. We have what it takes. We start mm -hmm. with we'll our money. We, we, we move our money, most of our money are in private hands. We mm. can. We have the capacity. 
So yeah. let's not be deceived people to say that we, we, we don't have it. We have it. And we so we're buying, we're we're buying SUVs for 160 million. Yeah. Then we, we, are not we should be able to. We are not yeah. prioritizing our. We are not prioritizing our our critical sectors. Yeah. One is being treated the way useless things. Renovation of uh, this person's house. Renovation of this person's house. Fifteen million. Yeah. Renovation of what is, is that what you are supposed to do here? Mm. Move all those things you are you are frittering away and use it to to pay to pay health workers. You are saying there's no money. We can match anybody in the world with money. Okay, okay. Like, we, we, have to, we have to wrap up, but I want to take this one from The Guardian quickly before we mm. go. And it says, federal government firms trade jobs as illegal expatriates take over the economy. So there are lots of expatriates. Well, there are some numbers here that says uh, about 13,000 expatriate quota, 1,600 work permits issued in three years. So we're seeing a lot of expatriates coming into Nigeria taking over the economy. But even some of them are illegal. What are your thoughts on that? Look, it's unfortunate that uh, we are giving jobs to expatriates while our own people are leaving. You can see the paradox mm. in our situation. What kind of country is this? You know, you, you just see things, you know, things that are not supposed to happen in civilized climes are happening here. And you start wondering, are, are we really part of the world, global village? You know? So these are the things we are talking about. Your own, your own staff. When expatriates workers, when expatriate workers come, we pay them in uh, you negotiate mm -hmm. in, in, in foreign oh, currency man. and you don't decide the equivalency. Some some people have some people earn their money in foreign currency. That is why I was countering you when you said there's no money. We have money. So you are bringing expatriates in to pay them huge amount of money in dollars or in pounds or whatever. And our own people are leaving, you said there's no money. Even the job that is left to our people, we, we are we are we are sabotaging it and giving it to uh, to foreigners. Like many, many other countries, when you go there with your, apart from the contract they give to you, they will insist that your, your, you know, that their own people do it. But here in Nigeria, we sign contracts with other countries. They are bringing their expertise, they are bringing their staff to execute that project. A lot of some of these uh, donor agencies, that's what they do. A serious country will not do that. If you want to do a partnership with us, after bringing your phone, our people will run it. We have all the competencies in Nigeria. Everything we think of under the earth, we have the competencies in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria people are resourceful. So you cannot allow people to be bringing in, you sign an agreement, you are paying for it. Look at Chinese people everywhere, it's a yeah. Chinese project. You can try that in China. You can try that in any serious country. So these things must stop. Even when you are setting up your own industry with your own one in other countries, they will give you quota, they will tell you that. 40% or 50% or XYZ number of management must be uh, their own people. Yeah. Some of them give it the condition that the managing director must be from, from their country. And some will give you that 80% of the junior workforce must be from their country. That's a hard serious country as well, creating jobs for their people. But here we allow people just run, run whatever they want. And we want job that is not let for us. We give contracts to foreigners and, and, and allow them to bring in their foreign expatriates. No country moves forward this way. Nigeria should wake up and do the right things so that we can move forward. Right now, we are running around in circles and yeah. it takes us nowhere. Well, I hope we start to prioritize our own citizens um, and make sure that we're giving them jobs. We're creating jobs for um, the, in, the, the citizens of Nigeria instead of bringing other people in. But yes, we want to thank you, Dr. Ambrose Ibukwe, for joining us today and reviewing the papers. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show. All right, we've been talking to Dr. Ambrose Ibukwe. He's the chairman, Guild of Public Affairs Analysts of Nigeria, Inigo State Chapter. We'll go on a quick break, and when we return, we'll look at our hot topics. Stay with us. <laughs>